This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at GDC 2016. I am at the Yoast Labs exhibit. To my immediate right is none other than Paul Yoast, CTO and founder of Yoast Labs, and to his right is Greg Merrill, CEO of Yoast Labs. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you you guys have a, a very a wonderful history behind you. I mean, we've we've actually known your company for a couple of years now, and originally it was under YEI technology. Right. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about, Paul, I'll start with you. Maybe you could tell us your early history in this space. Uh, essentially, under YEI technology, we've been developing uh, inertial sensors for really the last eight years now. Uh, coming up on nine years, really, which is hard to believe that. But we were originally in kind of the military and aerospace uh, markets for those sensors. We still are in the mar those markets for those sensors. But we noticed that uh, a couple things. In our own labs, we put sensors on us and we're kind of involved in virtual reality. Uh, long before it kind of had its resurgence, we were doing that just because that's what people that are nerdy do uh, in their spare time. Uh, but the other thing we noticed is we had a number of users that were using our sensors, putting them on their bodies as well. And so it became very compelling to us to see when virtual reality started making this resurgence or even in our own lab looking down and being able to see your hands with this full body motion sensing suit which is a product we're applying our sensor technology to now and we're showing here today uh, that's that kind of is what what has driven us to kind of continue this thing is that it's such a compelling experience that it's uh, it's worth pursuing now what I remember is that when you to launch uh, well, uh, it's called the pre OVR suit yes right. Correct. So what I remember is it started off as a Kickstarter, which didn't pan out the first time, and then the company retooled, and it was a successful second round, and then I gather, you know, for whatever reasons, it didn't pan out, you know, to, to release the product, but your company retooled, you know, kind of rebuilt itself to make it possible. Greg, how, how did you enter the picture? Well, just to, to finish your thought, Neil, I mean, what, the, what was clear was that there's a huge demand for full body immersive experience in virtual reality. And that's why the Kickstarter program the second time was so successful, getting over $320,000 of pre-orders uh, through that program. Um, I got uh, recruited by Paul and the team to help take the company to the next generation. We know that the company's got really amazing technology. It's been validated by companies that are using the sensors for their ability to be very low latency with tracking movement. So even for drones and other non-virtual reality applications, the company's been very successful there. The challenge has been to put all that together into a very low cost inertial tracking suit. And um, so you know, that's what the pre-OVR is. And when I was uh, contacted by the team to look at, at coming on as the CEO, I was looking at what do, what do they really have? You know, is this, you know, what's out there? What's the opportunity? And one of the things we've seen, and I know that you know this, is that virtual reality is really taking off right now. So it's an exciting time. And to join Paul and, and with the technology they have, I was really excited to do that. And what we've been really focused on is taking the pre-OVR technology and let's, let's move it out to the market. So we're now in manufacturing. It's a really exciting time. And I just want to add that, you know, originally the, the fundraising was done through Kickstarter and you had a successful round, but in call it if you want a rebuilding, restructuring to this new entity, you raised some investment as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, you know, one of the things you need to do as a, as a small company is you need to get the capital in place and not just the uh, financial capital, but also the brain capital. So. And fortunately, in Ohio, there's a number of people who are experts in, in areas including rehabilitation, including other uh, strategically important areas uh, of, of vertical market knowledge. And so those people came in with their intellectual capital and financial capital, and that's one of the reasons why I'm also able to be in the company is because this capital came in, and we're really retooling the company as well as retooling the virtual reality suits and getting out into the market. It's public knowledge. I mean, it was sent out in a press release. Can you tell us what kind of money you managed to raise for, for the company? Yeah, we put together an initial uh, seed round of a million dollars uh, to get the company going and, and also to engage new markets, you know, specifically markets like rehabilitation and, and the virtual reality markets. Wonderful. Now, Paul, uh, you're the CTO, so it's up to you to tell us about the technology. The responsibility is on you. Now, the last time uh, we met, you showed us the original pre-OVR suit. Tell us about the suit, what it does, what makes it unique, and what you've done in the past two years. Um, the 
essentially what the suit is, it's a full body uh, motion sensing suit. Uh, so, uh, but one of the things we spent a lot of engineering effort on is getting it to be extremely low latency. And that's incredibly important to virtual reality spaces because if you have this full body motion sensing suit, uh, you want to look down and kind of suspend that disbelief or feel like that is your actual body. So when you move, it moves. And so we have worked a lot on getting the latency down. Uh, we've also worked a lot on uh, keeping maintaining the accuracy of our uh, sensors that are used in military and aerospace applications. So we have this uh, accuracy that's comparable to sensors that the U.S. Navy and other uh, clients use in kind of these military applications, but we're putting it in kind of the, the full body motion sensing suit. So we have highly accurate sensors, very low latency, and that makes it perfect for uh, any kind of interactive thing, especially virtual reality where you need to have that low level uh, of latency. Now, over the past year or two, I mean, there's there's VR head-mounted display manufacturers that are putting out sensors of their own. I mean, we you know we we know the brand names and so on. How do you differentiate yourself? What what make what makes this unique from what else is out there in the market? Um, I think the the main thing that makes it unique is most of those other technologies are using optical solutions uh, to do the body tracking, uh, or magnet. So there's some magnetic uh, solutions as well out there. Uh, but the problem with the optical and magnetic solutions is uh, kind of the same problem for both of them. Optical a little bit more so because you have occlusion issues. That if you have a you have to have a specific space, a specific there's specific requirements for that technology to be used. Uh, you have to uh, have some kind of base station that watches you, and that's true with the magnetic system. Uh, uh, as well, where the Prio VR is completely un untethered, you don't really have to have any uh, proximity, you don't need a, any special requirements, you can put on the suit wherever, outside on the bus, uh, uh, on a train, in the park, wherever it, it'll so there's no wires, there's no, like, you could walk around a room, no concern? Right, you can walk around a room with no concern, and uh, speaking uh, more to that, is because it's not optical based or magnetic based, then you don't have to worry about interference from other people wearing the suit. So you can have a large group of people all together uh, in one space using their own suits without any interference problems or occlusion issues you would have with the other systems. So let's talk a little bit about the business behind this. You've got this wonderful technology, obviously it works. Um, you know where what are your target markets who who would you market to and you know with this technology well one of the things we've done is we've retooled the Prio VR concept into the Prio VR dev kit and we recognize that what we need to do to be successful is to have content developers that build on top of this platform so our our suit is not a end user suit it's really a development environment and we're selling really a hybrid between this hardware product and our own intellectual uh, partnership with our content developers. So we want to help with integration into the content. We'll provide them with this tool set. And then when they go to market, we're, we're hoping that people go to market with mass market applications in gaming, in rehabilitation, in serious gaming and training, um, that we'll provide specific solutions based on this Prio VR concept that meet those specific needs of those markets. So let, me, let me rephrase the question. Um, do you see Prio VR is something that you buy in the store under the Prio VR brand name, or is this going to be a scenario where companies license the technology and use that technology in their own IP? Like company X says has their own suit, but it's based on Prio VR technology. No, thanks for that setup. I mean, really, it is like a white label business. So we're we're providing this technology, and our partners will be branding the technology in the market. We're not going to be going into. Uh, don't expect to go to your Fry's or your Best Buy store and see a Prio VR suit. And as far, you know, this is pretty complex technology. I mean, we, it's so easy to take things for granted, but it is, it is complex technology. Do you have, it, 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 you know, in a, an ideal scenario, what do you think the pricing would be for something like this? Well, I mean, that's the thing. We're all, we're all pushing the, the pricing down. And I think that one of the things to recognize is that for the specific application, it's going to be a different set of sensors. It's going to be a different set of requirements um, in terms of the textiles. So. You know, the price points, we know that in the consumer gaming market, you got to get down there into the $100 sort of price range at the, at the consumer pricing. So that puts some constraints on the technology. But on in other markets, there is the ability to go high, more higher end in terms of the what's there in terms of the equipment as well as the price points. So it's really going to be a, a, a wide spectrum of, of pricing for the end, end user. Uh, we're very pleased to have really broken through a, a price barrier with our suits where just a few years ago would have been $12,000 or more for an inertial suit that had nowhere near the performance of the uh, Prio VR dev kit. 
Um, so it's, just, it's really exciting that we've gone, now the MSRP is $1,200, where it would have been $12,000 just a couple of years ago. Now, Paul, if I can ask, we're, we're at GDC 2016, you're surrounded by game developers. Um, what would be a success for you here? What, what are you looking to achieve? Um, I think there's a lot of successes uh, that are available to us here. Uh, what we'd like to do is get, uh, since we are uh, essentially ready to ship our dev kit, what would be a, a success is for people to start adopting the technology. And one of the problems in virtual reality right now is that there's kind of a chicken and the egg problem going on, that there, uh, there are platforms that are becoming available, but there's not really content. And until there, there's both content, then the platforms aren't going to be widely adopted. So we're kind of still in that, uh, that phase of where things are shaking themselves out for what is going to be the dominant platforms, what's the content going to look like for those platforms, how are consumers going to interact with that. And so what we'd like to, a success for us would be, be uh, partnering with the right people to be part of that equation to, for us to provide the body experience for those virtual experiences. Okay. And one question for you is, you know, there's going to be obviously people purchasing this for future use. Um, is there present use cases? For example, motion capture. I mean, is this an applicable market for this? Yes, absolutely. One of the things that we're doing with uh, the shipping of our uh, dev kit is we actually have a free open source uh, mocap studio application uh, that we're completely refactoring. We are completely rewriting that. We have programmers uh, back in Ohio right now working on that code. Uh, but uh, that will allow people not just to have a real-time interactive game experience, but for game developers like we see here, they could actually use that to develop their own motion capture content uh, for creating the games. And actually, our demos as well, all of our motion capture sequences for our non-player characters are all done with our own suit. And so it's a it's the kind of thing that not only can you use it for gaming, but you can use it to create games as well. There, there are current end users for using those suits for uh, military training, and there's also rehabilitation applications currently for the for the suits. So there, there are certainly current applications, but everyone is focused on the future and what's happening with virtual reality for sure. Now, if I wanted to, to buy one of the development kits, what would it cost me? How would I do it? It's $1,200. You can go online to yoastlabs.com, and you can place your order right now. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for joining us. Congratulations. I mean, this is, I just think this is a wonderful story. I, I really do. Anyway, thank you both for joining us on MTBS TV. Thank you. Right. Thank you. This is Neil Schneider at GDC 2016. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.